will discuss about the central principle of the universe which governs the entire life in this living world. We are talking about the topic of the common interest that is central dogma. My dear friends, what do our parents give us? When we ask this question to a general person, he will say, our parents are giving us a life. They are the life donor for us. But as far as the student of life sciences is concerned, we would say that our parents are giving something more than this life. Let me see one picture wherein you will look at two great heroines of the film industry. One is Hema Malini and the other is uh, her daughter. You can very easily find the similarities between the mother and the daughters and these similarities are not only their facial expressions but they are having more similarities in the skills they are having. So I think that whatever is the thing inherited to the daughters from the mother that are definitely something very different and that something very different is the material which we refer as the genetic material. My dear friends, this genetic material is nothing but the nucleic acid and we have already gone through the topics in which we have confirmed that most of the living organisms, almost all the organ organisms are having the DNA as their genetic material. Only one exceptional case is there and that exceptional case is retroviruses wherein RNA is as the genetic material or otherwise all the organisms are having the DNA as their genetic material. So, this DNA is giving us the exact character which we say as the phenotype. This is the diagram which depicts that how the character which uh, will exhibit its expression as far as the morphology is concerned. In this diagram you can very easily see that there is the signal which is received at the cellular surface and it will be conveyed to the genetic material that is the gene or the DNA and that gene will start its expression and giving rise to the certain kind of a biomolecules which will finally give rise to the trait or the character to the individual. So this is the entire framework which will be called as the signaling cascade in which the signal will be received by the genetic material and ultimately it will go to the production of the character. So this entire framework is explained in this diagram you can see that this is the cell which is animal cell wherein you will find the reception of the signal at the cellular receptors and the signal will be conveyed inside the cell by using certain cascade of events and that is uh, called as the signaling cascade in which the signal will be conveyed through the intermediate products which are there in the cellular matrix and that signal will be conveyed through the messengers and these messengers are called as the second messengers. Here in this case it is the cyclic AMP which has received the signal and this signal is now conveyed through the multiple intermediates to the specific target. Now what exactly is the target for these molecules? These molecules are conveying message from one to another and finally the destination of this will be the genetic material which is located in the nucleus. This is the final regulator which has the entry inside the nucleus and once it enters into the nucleus it will reach to the regulatory sequences of the DNA and once this signal is received then only there will be commencement of the expression of these genes. So dear friends this signaling cascade is giving the exact reception of the signal and production of the character. So this is the entire thing which is incorporated into the central dogma. We are very well aware that DNA structure is described by Watson, Crick, Wilkins and one more lady I have to name here Rosalind Franklin. Once they have described the structure later on Francis Crick has elaborated the functioning of this DNA as the central dogma of the universe and that central dogma is saying that this is the 
transformation of the genetic information from DNA sequence to the sequence of amino acid which we refer as the peptide or the proteins. This central dogma in the molecular biology is the explanation of the molecular language of every organism. We say that it is the molecular language of the every organism which starts from the DNA and reaching to the protein. So this molecular language is elaborated in the phenomenon or in the concept of the central dogma. Now what exactly is the central dogma? The central dogma is passing the information from DNA to the protein and one very important thing that this cannot get back again. So information will be passed on from DNA to RNA, RNA to protein but it will never come back again. So this is the concept which is proposed by the Crick and in this concept he elaborated that the nucleic acid or the DNA is the sequence of nucleotides which is the specific for a specific gene. Now this information will be transferred and this information will be processed to produce a kind of peptide or a protein which is again the sequence of, uh, sequence of amino acids in a specific order which depends on the sequence of the nucleotides present in the DNA. So this entire process is referred as the central dogma and this central dogma is proposed by Francis Crick which is the concept common for entire living organisms that's why it is referred as the central dogma of the universe. The central dogma is restated in the nature which is the significant paper published in the year 1970 wherein this is having a bit uh, change in the definition and it is saying that the central dogma of the molecular biology deals with the detailed residue by residue transfer of sequential information. This means that the same thing which was there in the earlier version that is transfer of the sequence of nucleotide to the sequence of amino acids in the peptide. So this is the re-investigations of the central dogma and which is again published in the nature in the year 1970. This is the central dogma wherein the entire processing of the information is depicted. Here you will be very easily see that the DNA is the double standard structure which has potential to replicate. It will be transcribed into the form of RNA which will be various kinds of RNA that may be mRNA that may be rRNA that may be tRNA or that may be other kinds of RNA through the process called as transcription. When there is the case of retroviruses in that case there will be replication of the RNA because RNA will be the genetic material in case of retroviruses they will be going for reverse transcription and producing the double-stranded DNA by the process called as reverse transcription with the help of enzyme called as reverse transcriptase. So this reverse transcription process will produce DNA from the RNA and then it will transcribe and form the single-stranded RNA and later it will go for the production of the peptide. So this is the process which is called as the transcription and translation to produce the specific type of protein which has bit variation in the adenoviruses and the retroviruses. Adenoviruses are common as all the other organisms whereas only retroviruses are having the RNA as their genetic material. So this central dogma should be depicted in the diagrammatic form like this. You should have the DNA which will be transcribed into the formation of the RNA. This RNA will be translated into the protein. So this is the one way flow of information from the DNA to the protein, you should mark that this DNA and RNA should be replicating. So here it is the modern central dogma which has the use of in silico techniques. As it was referred in the uh, version by Crick and the revisited version published in the nature wherein it is said that this is the irreversible process. But here in this case it is depicted that 
protein can be decoded into the form of RNA, RNA can be decoded in the form of the DNA. Only the thing is, these are the things which will be carried out with the help of informatics and that's why now this entire central dogma is the complete cycle. Only one thing is, you, we should keep in mind that DNA to RNA and RNA to protein will be possible naturally. It will not go back naturally. Only the thing is when you would like to depict the structure of DNA from the protein, you have to take assistance of the variety of tools from the bioinformatics. That's why this will be called as the in silico flow of information from proteins to the DNA. Otherwise, in nature, there will be no reversible flow as it is said in the central dogma. These will be the processes which will be called as the reverse transcription in which RNA will be further coming back to the DNA and then it will process for the formation of RNA by using the process of transcription. Translation will lead to the formation of the protein. So here it is the flow of information DNA to RNA by using transcription, RNA to protein by using process of translation. This is called as the central dogma which is the foundation for the gene expression. This is simply the gene expression. So, this gene expression will be carried out in the two com uh, compartments. Transcription will be carried out in case of the eukaryotes I am uh, uh, talking to you. It will be carried out in the nucleus itself whereas translation will be carried out in the cytoplasm. So, this is the complete process of the central dogma which will be there in every organism only one difference is there that in case of prokaryotes there will be no compartmentation therefore transcription and translation will go hand in hand so that process will not have any uh, barrier as there is the barrier in eukaryotes that nucleus will be devoted for transcription only whereas translation will be carried out in the cytoplasm so this entire process is called as the protein synthesis or this may be referred as the gene expression or this is called as the central dogma of the universe. This protein synthesis process is having the transcription, translation, peptide folding and targeting, sorting and trafficking and finally there will be a peptide assembling to form the active protein. These are the steps, these are the phases through which the entire gene expression process will be carried out and the entire foundation of this process is there in the central dogma proposed for the first time by Francis Crick. So to summarize the central dogma, one has to take care that this is proposed by Crick in the year 1957. Then this is a depiction of the central process governing life of the entire living world. Next it is the flow of information from DNA to RNA to peptide to protein and this is the unidirectional flow which will never come back again as far as the natural process is concerned when it will be in silico process then it will be possible to have the depiction prediction of the any sequence from any sequence say for example if we have the sequence of amino acids then we can synthesize the sequence of nucleotides in the DNA or in the RNA by using some in silico techniques. So this is called as the central dogma of the universe. I think I have cleared the idea, basic idea of the central dogma. This will be further elaborated in the next section that will be section really, uh, completely devoted for the study of gene expression. Thank you.